if we don't create new dreams, new images of the future, we are not challenged to struggle and hope dies. We have a long-standing history uh, of injustice in this country rooted in racism, classism, sexism. Uh, and so when we come to matters of the environment or any of the social policy areas, health, education, uh, you name it, we, we face justice issues. I was race conscious at a very early age when I was growing up in Little Rock, Arkansas. I, mean, I knew that uh, blacks were lived in inferior neighborhoods where you have all the dumps, the incinerators, the sewer treatment plants, etc. I didn't challenge those norms until after I started graduate school at the University of Michigan. And more specifically, I didn't challenge those norms until I met uh, Jean Carver, who is my wife. Bunyan was tremendously courageous to come into this all-white school and to stay the course. It was not often pleasant uh, for him. Uh, he had to uh, deal with, with patterns of racism, but he exhibited immense commitment and patience. Occasionally individuals like Bunyan emerge who begin to enhance hope and counter despair. Well, there was a lot that was going on, different movements you had going on on campus. You had the environmental movement, you had this, the civil rights movement, you had the peace movement, you had the counterculture movement, you had the women's movement. And all these movements were happening simultaneously here at the University of Michigan. I mean, sometimes you wake up and you, you outrage in terms of what was going on in the civil rights arena or what was going on in the war in Vietnam. Uh, other times you were excited because there were certain victories that we were, we were able to accomplish. I believe it was 1971, students from the School of Natural Resources showed up at our respective office doors at the Institute for Social Research. And this group envisioned some kind of new master's level program that would address the environment, but also along with it, social equity. The School of Natural Resources provided me with another window from which to look at society, and that was the environment. Dr. Paul Mohai, who along with Dr. Bryant, had the vision uh, to call a national conference that would focus on race and environmental hazards and the connections between the two. At the time, there was nothing like this in the U.S. The 1990 conference was called Race and the Incidents of Environmental Hazards colon, a time for discourse. It played a role in establishing the Office of Environmental Justice within EPA. It directly played a role in establishing the National Environmental Justice Advisory Council. It also played a role in Environmental Justice Executive Order 12898. Establishing environmental justice as a responsibility of the federal government across all of its agencies. What the environmental justice movement has done has kind of called us to look for, you know, what are the options? What are the alternatives? What are the ways to have a cleaner, better, healthier future? Principles of environmental justice can help everybody, but particularly Americans, to get a, a deeper grasp of the world that we're living in. One of the, his most important contributions is what he's done to create opportunities and pathways for others interested in continuing this work. The Environmental Justice Program at the School of Natural Resources and Environment at the University of Michigan is the premier environmental justice program in the country. And Bunyan Bryant has been the founding cornerstone of that program and has helped to keep it healthy and vibrant and engaged and evolving over time as the field itself has evolved. People need to know more about how he came to think the way he does so that they can begin to do the things that he's done. He has stood up on these issues at times when he was the only voice. What Bunyan has done is really helped shine a light on communities that many other folks would care to forget about. He taught
taught us that it was possible to be a thoughtful, intellectual, and academic, and scholar at the same time that you were fully engaged in the community and actually effecting real positive change in the world. Here we're honoring a person for outstanding academic achievement, a person of incredible ethics, values, and integrity, and a person who is a tremendous teacher. He really you know, has worked so hard to create the next generation and, and future generations of environmental justice scholars and environmental justice advocates too. We need to become visionaries and take on um, the battle to the, to the next step. We have to de define our own communities and what we like to see in our own communities which is rooted in the concept that we need new dreams to struggle for, to challenge us to struggle. If we could all marry our intellectual interests and community activism in such a seamless and profound way as Bunyan Bryant has, then we would be changing the world on a daily basis. We're on the threshold of a new kind of revolution, which is also an evolution to a new stage of humanity. We got to have hope, and we can hope that everything, anything is possible.